Named after an American Civil War general, the Sherman tank became the most widely used tank by the Western Allies, seeing service on most fronts of the Second World War. Join me in this video as I build and review the Airfix 176 scale plastic model kit of this popular and well-known World War II tank. Hi, I'm Matt and you're watching Model Minutes. Before I start the video, a quick shout out to my patrons. These guys directly support the channel and allow me to produce the videos that you all love to watch. So a massive thank you to you. Check out the links under the video to find out how to become a patron and what it means and discover the perks you could unlock. For those of you who remember, I did an unboxing video of this kit. So for more information on what you get in the box, please take a look at that one. For this video, I'm going to focus on the build how it turns out and my final review of the model. Before I start building, please remember that adult supervision may be required due to the use of sharp tools and toxic paints and chemicals. Airfix recommends this kit to those aged eight years and older. On removing the plastic components from the box, the 55 parts that make up the kit will require a wash in warm soapy water prior to being used. Washing these parts helps remove any oil or grease that might be left over from the moulding process. I then leave them to air dry. I begin the construction by snipping all of the wheels from their sprue and cleaning up the burrs with a nail file. There are quite a few of these, so this does become quite repetitive. I then repeat this for the suspension parts, again taking care when removing them from the sprue and cleaning up with a nail file. I test fit the wheels onto their locating pins on the suspension parts. The instructions recommend that you don't cement them in place. This gives me the impression that if you assemble this kit carefully, there is the possibility for the tracks to rotate freely. But having done some research and discovered that the tooling for this kit dates from 1961, I seriously doubt that it will be achievable. My fears were confirmed when I discovered that the first test wheel had become jammed in place on its locating pin. If the rest of the wheels are like this, then rotating wheels will be out of the question. I decide to drill out the centre of the wheels with a fine drill bit in an attempt to see if they fit better. Having finished drilling out the wheel centres, I place them onto their locating pins and cement the two halves of the suspension bogies together. I'm using Tamiya extra thin cement throughout this build as I feel it has good bonding properties and can be accurately placed thanks to the applicator brush in the lid. This step must be completed six times before all the suspension bogies are completed. Next, I remove the return rollers from the sprue and cement them into one side of the tank hull in the correct holes. These are then joined by three of the bogey assemblies. You must take a little care here as the parts sit very close to each other and it is possible to dislodge the other components as you go. The guide roller at the rear cements into place in the correct hole. This is then followed by the front drive sprocket. This comes in two halves and these are cemented together. The instructions tell you not to cement it into position, but to simply push it into place. This is probably as part of the attempt to make the tracks rotate. I felt that it would be better to glue it in, however, as I feared that it would simply fall out of the hole over time. The previous steps can be repeated on the other side of the hull until you have both assemblies ready for the main hull to be added. First, I removed and cleaned up the bottom of the hull. This was then cemented to the two sides. Next, I add the rear of the tank with the access doors. This must be positioned at an angle to ensure it fits correctly. Finally, the top of the tank is cemented into place. The fit was surprisingly good, with only tiny gaps being visible in places. The turret was then assembled. The various components were removed from the sprue and cleaned up. A little work may be required on some of these parts, particularly the hatch doors, to ensure they fit snugly in position. It looks to me that the doors could be cemented in the open position if you so chose, 
perhaps adding a crewman or scratch built interior as part of a diorama. I followed the instructions and cemented it closed however. The barrel of the main gun can be pushed into position and not cemented. This is again in an attempt by Airfix to add a little play value and allow the gun to traverse up and down. The smaller details such as the coaxial machine gun are also cemented into place. With the turret complete, the remaining small detail parts are added to the main hull of the tank. These include two more hatch covers which again needed a little cleaning up and another machine gun. At this point, with the majority of the assembly complete, I moved on to painting the tank. I followed the instructions and used the recommended Humbrol 86 light olive matte acrylic, which I thinned with Tamiya acrylic thinners. This will help prevent leaving any brush strokes in the final paintwork. Using a medium sized brush, I then applied this thinned paint to the entire tank. In hindsight, I found applying the paint to the areas around the wheels and suspension a little difficult and should probably have painted them before cementing in place. But after a little perseverance, I was successful. With the paint drying, I moved on to paint the tracks with Humbrol 29 Matte Earth Acrylic Paint. I used this paint straight out of the pot and covered the entire track, front and back. The next step was to paint the areas that were to receive decals with Humbrol 135 Satin Varnish Acrylic. This was thinned with a little water. The satin varnish will give a good base for the decals and prevent them from silvering. The tracks were then dry brushed with Humbrol 53 Gunmetal Grey. This will help bring out the raised details and give a contrast with the previous brown layer. I also used Humbrol 53 to highlight the treads on the running wheels and the two machine guns. I had to take care here and found it a little difficult, again wishing I'd painted these parts before adding them to the model, but was able to get there in the end with a little patience. I used this paint to then pick out other small moulded details such as the heads of the shovel and pickaxe. Humbrol 26 Khaki Matte Acrylic was used to highlight the wooden parts of these tools. I used a fine brush and took my time to carefully follow the raised details. At this point I am ready to apply the decals. I had decided to depict the British version, so I cut them away from the sheet and put the US decals in my spares box. The decals were soaked in warm water to allow them to separate from the backing paper. The areas that were to receive the decals were given a coat of Humbrol decal fix. This will help them soften into the surface and appear painted on. I identified the correct locations for the decals from the instructions and gently slid them off the backing paper and took great care in positioning them. When they had settled into the surface and were not able to be moved, I gave them a further coat of decal fix to soften them further. With the decals now dry, the entire model was given a coat of Humbrol 49 Matte Varnish Enamel. This enamel layer will help protect the decals and previous acrylic layers in the next step. When the varnish was dry, Citadel Non-Oil Acrylic Wash was applied to the entire model. This wash helps to bring out the recessed details and apply a subtle weathered effect. When it had dried slightly, Tamiya acrylic thinners were applied to cotton buds and these were used to remove the excess wash from the raised areas of the tank. Had I not used an enamel varnish earlier, the previous acrylic paints would also be removed at this point. The tracks were then cut from each other using a sharp knife, taking care to remove the burrs that could be left over. They were then joined together and taped to the workbench to prevent them from moving. I heated a scalpel with the flame from a lighter and when it was suitably hot I pressed it on the inside of the tracks where they joined, melting the two halves together. You must be careful here, not only for your own safety as fire is incredibly dangerous, but also so that you don't melt too much of the tracks and end up damaging them. The tracks can now be added to the model, gently stretching them over the wheels and sprockets like an elastic band. Care must be taken to prevent it from snapping. The final step was to apply a little weathering. 
I used Humbrol 11 Silver Acrylic to add a slight metallic effect in places. I removed the majority of the paint onto a paper towel and then dry brushed the residue of various areas of the model, such as the running gear, moving parts and sharp edges. And that's as far as I went with my model of the Airfix Sherman M4A2 tank in 176 scale. So, what do I think of this kit? If I'm honest, I thought it looked weird and oddly proportioned right up until I put the tracks on. I guess that's due to the fact that it was a bit strangely sized in real life. This was born of the requirement for it to be transportable in Europe, where the roads and railways were narrower, and this was incorporated into the design of the tank. I think it is a fair representation of a Sherman tank, but I have read in places that it's not particularly accurate for a M4A2 version. I couldn't tell you exactly why not, as tanks are not my forte, but if you know, please drop a comment with an explanation. The other thing that some people might find annoying is that being scaled at 176, it looks a bit off when positioned with the slightly smaller 172nd scale aircraft and vehicles. This tank kit has a bit of its heritage back at the time when Airfix was also in the model railway scene, so a lot of its tanks are made to 176 scale, also known as UK 00 gauge. This allowed people to expand their railway and model collection and use them to play together. This brings me on to the play factor in this kit. It's clear that with the rubber band tracks and the supposedly moving wheels, sprocket, turret and gun, this model was also meant to be a bit of a toy. With the age of the tooling and the natural degradation of time, I feel that this is a little unrealistic now. As a static model though, I feel it captures the overall look and shape of the Sherman tank. The details are a little crude in places, but generally it's a good model to add to the collection. Extra ideas for this model could be to add a crew, radio wires, sandbags, tools or supplies, and perhaps place it in a diorama of some kind. For the time being, I'm hoping to be able to add it to my Cromwell tank with the plans I've got in mind for that one. At the time of this video, this kit was no longer available on the Airfix website, so for the time being, it is out of production. Some stocks of this recent version, and also of previous releases, do seem to be around in various online sellers however, and they are up for sale for between £6 and £10 here in the UK. I think this is a reasonable price for this kit, but as always, I'd shop around for a deal. So, in conclusion, this is a fun little kit to build which can be completed to a reasonable standard in only a few hours, but it lacks the details and quality of model kits that have been designed in more recent years. There are various parts that can be frustrating and test your modelling skills, but generally the kit still goes together reasonably well. I really enjoyed building this little tank, and I'm really pleased with the results I've managed to achieve with my version of the Airfix Sherman tank in 176 scale. As always, let me know what you think of my build, techniques and finished model in the comments below. And if you've got any suggestions for other kits or videos you'd like to see me feature, please feel free to post that too. Also, take a look at the links in the description for extra content and perks. All that's left to say is thanks for watching, and I'll see you all again on the workbench next time.